I would describe it in different terms over the years. At the very beginning, um, it was more intuitions and feelings. Uh, and like at the very beginning, for me, it was almost, I could say, it was like a little tickle in the heart. Um, that when I would pick up a particular book or be drawn to a particular person or place, it would feel like a tickle. It was like an inner confirmation, like, ah, this is the right direction. So it was very basic, almost like a, a little, almost primal at the beginning. And then after I worked with the Course for like two and a half years of studying about eight hours a day, it was, it was as if it was like a telepathic stream of thoughts that was starting to become very distinguishable, not like uh, an audible voice. Uh, some of you have seen was that movie where the, the voice is speaking, uh, Stranger Than Fiction, where it's the voice of Emma Thompson in, in his mind very clearly. That's like an audible kind of voice. This is not an audible voice. And, and Helen Shuckman, this guy by the course, never really heard an, an audible voice. But it was more like a telepathic stream of thoughts that were very distinct. And so it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like a stream of thoughts that was mixed in with a lot of other thoughts. Because that could be quite hard to discern. But it was, there was like a, with the mind training of the Course for me, came like turning the static down, turning the chatter down, the mind getting progressively more quiet, so that this stream of thoughts was very, very distinct. And by following the stream of thoughts, which was really a lot of instructions, very, very practical, um, it just seemed to, the mind got quieter and quieter, and the trust in that stream of thought grew stronger and stronger. And I, I really felt like Jesus had always been my teacher, but it was more teaching through parables and through the, the Bible and then as well through the Course, but this was like an actual presence offering me moment by moment instructions. And it was, it was very helpful, even when I would travel around the country and, and go to you know, meet with Robert Perry or Ken Wapnick, Beverly Hutchinson, some of the, the people that have spent their lives dedicated to the Course in the United States, I would hear this distinct uh, instructions even when I was listening to teachers. It would be commenting, pointing out good points, saying, look at this discernment. It was, it was like having an internal teacher to interact with. And so that's how it was. And then as I began traveling around uh, the United States and Canada back in 1991, it was just guiding me on an adventure, where to go, uh, speaking through me. Um, it, it just became like a, a very internal relationship that was very, very helpful because it just, my heart just opened more and more. I felt more and more joyful. I, I felt it was highly practical. And for most people, I say that it's, it's really a process because there aren't a lot of people that, that hear that stream in such a clear way. Usually it is, you have to rely on the feelings, the intuitions, and, and the synchronicities. Uh, and, and opening the mind to see it, you know, hear it when someone else is speaking to you. Uh, when you see a bumper or sticker or a billboard or um, someone's walking by with a boombox and the particular part of the song, the lyrics come and, you, and they hit you. You start to open your mind more and more to be reached by the Holy Spirit in any possible way. And then I just think for most people, the signs and the symbols start to become more and more pronounced, where they really feel like they're being guided in many different ways, but it's the same presence that's behind that guidance. And as you progressively move along with it, you know, you can get to points where uh, you may be doing journaling and receive guidance in that way, or you, you can't even hear it in terms of uh, thoughts coming through. But it's highly individualized, so it's important not to put too much pressure on yourself 
more so just open up and be willing to be in contact. Because um, I just come out of ten years of university full, as a full-time student, and um, when I came to the course, it was like a deep, strong feeling, like my life would never be the same, and that something huge was going to happen. Um, so I had a lot of anticipation, and I noticed that. Um, after all those years of university and all those projects and all the books I read, that I really wasn't tempted to read it from the first page all the way through to the last page. I started using it more like an I Ching uh, at the beginning, that my state of mind was really receptive and open at that point. And when I saw it, there was such a deep sense of recognition. Ah, look at this! Isn't this great? But still, I would I would use it mostly of waiting in silence until I had a question, an, an internal question would kind of come to the surface of awareness, and then I would open the book, and there was the answer every time. And I thought, this is really cool. This is like having a, a teacher just sitting across from you, and you could just ask all the questions, and it would do that. And I was very interested in the answers, so much so that instead of just reading the answer in like several sentences or a paragraph, I would be excited, I would feel just like a child who, uh, who really wants to learn something, wants to be like a sponge and soak it up. I would read on and on and on until I was guided either to set the book down or sometimes I would read on so much that it would go on for hours and then the ego resistance would start to grow, and my eyelids would grow really heavy, and they would, the eyelids would come down, and I would just close the book, and take a nap, or go for a walk, or go for a swim, or have a snack, or something light. It was never guided to push, like to force my way, keep my eyes open, just be gentle. And I would follow the feelings of what I should do in a very relaxing way, and then when I would really be really refreshed, usually then I would come back and just in the place of stillness, have the book, ask the internal question, and the same process be answered. So it wasn't a chronological practice for me. When I say study, it was more like, like ah, you will, you will give me the answers, and I will allow the questions to come. And I will not push myself at all. Then there came a point where, obviously with the workbook, you know, the simple instructions are, you know, don't do more than one lesson a day, and as best as you can, try not to make exceptions. So at that point, it was, there was a discipline of, of taking a lesson on and, and basically staying with that lesson, sometimes for a day, two days, rarely maybe three days and really practicing putting the lesson into practice with all my interactions and whatever I would do, uh, had that lesson in mind. And so that was more of a, of a discipline than the, the kind of the I Ching popping it open. So that's basically how, how those early years went.